welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week Update Podcast. Here I am, Adolfo Ferranda. This is episode number 39 and uh, at Nerdstalker on Twitter, and I'm here with my co-host here, and you are? Hey, I am Greg Valorio, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. Hey, how's it going, man? All Busy right. Week? Busy it's week? It's going Apple. That's how it's going, right? So Apple is blown away by the incredible iPhone 5 demand. There was an iPhone 5 release this week? I know, right? <laughs> right. I think my favorite like headline of all these stories was uh, uh, disappointing iPhone 5 sells out in less than an hour or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> That was very disappointing. Very disappointing indeed. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, yeah, so thanks to John Nathan S. Geller from Boy Genius Reports for this story. Uh, this one, is, says he says, Apple has finally chimed in with their uh, take on the iPhone 5 pre-order sales. And in short, they are, quote, blown away by the customer response, unquote. In a statement uh, to The Loop, Ap- Apple also goes on to say... Um, that pre-orders for the iPhone 5 have been incredible, unquote, and are all spoken for. If you want to get your uh, iPhone 5 on uh, launch day, uh, AT&T and Verizon have also moved uh, through their allotment inventory for launch day delivery, not pushing shipments back more than a week in most cases. Sprint also seems to be about sold out with uh, possibly some 64 gigabyte units left, uh, but that's not confirmed. Uh, at this point, if you want to get an iPhone 5 and didn't pre-order it, it looks like uh, visiting an actual Apple, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, Target, or uh, a Walmart or other ret- retail store is about your only option. So oh. more Apple. Greg, what's your story here? Well, you know, the lightning adapter, uh, they changed the uh, Apple adapter, as you know, from the 30-pin standard adapter that's been used since 2003 to this 8-pin adapter. Now, you know, you own an iPhone 5, have a BMW, and you want to connect to the lightning adapter? Don't even try. <laughs> um, the BMW's iPod out will not work. Um, it's been tested. Uh, the, the iPod out feature, as you know, uh, allows drivers to get a familiar iPod-like interface displayed on in-dash screen with their equipped their BMW or Mini mo- models with that uh, feature. So um, disappointment there. But um, the BMW spokesman said, there is a lot we still don't know. But BMW has a long history of finding compatibility solutions for iPods and smartphones where none existed. I, I translate to that. We better get our ass in gear, and we better do this quickly. Yeah, that's that's odd because I know Apple announced the dongle, you know, the adapter for for the thirty to to lightning uh, pin thing, and uh, yeah, that's surprising to hear. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. they, I don't see how BMW can can ignore that demographic anyways because that that is their customer. Oh gosh, I mean, it's right in the sweet spot of their age demographic, as you just pointed out. Well, in their income and they demographic, even more importantly, I think, right? Oh. Absolutely. And I think, I think, well, that, that brings up the bigger issue is that, you know, whenever you change connectors, you're going to have issues like this, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's inevitable, right? And, and it's the case of backwards compatibility. And, you know, Apple being a smart company as it is, I'm sure they calculated all this out. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, this and, is nothing new. I don't see, I don't even see the issue because all these, as you said, connectors, I mean, it's an ever changing, you know, evolving thing that we've been experiencing, even with the hardware on the computer side. I mean, remember SCSI adapters? Remember, oh, you know, yeah, USB one, yeah. uh, VGA, yeah, DVI. Yeah. I mean, we can go on yeah. and on about stuff. USB one, two, uh, Thunderbolt, uh, what, what a Firewire. <laughs> uh, we Firewire, could we could go yes. on and on. So I, yeah, I mean, well, it's just another evolution in connectors. I don't know. Well, I heard they had to change it because of the thinness of the new iPhone 5. I guess that's another feature. I mean, it's just thin, thin and light, right? And so that 30-pin connector uh, from sources said that it just just wouldn't work with that that profile that they want to go with, so they had to change the connector. And, you know... um, It's kind of ridiculous to have 30 pins anyways, you know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> Small device. I don't know what they had planned. I never saw the pin out diagram for that thing, okay. so I don't know what they had planned for that darn thing. You know, <laughs> being an electrical engineer, I want I want to see exactly what each of those pins mean right, now. Right, now right. it's because obviously they didn't need twenty eight, twenty two of them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Obviously. Good point. Great point, Greg. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> let me lead you into the next story here. Another win for Apple, ITC says, huh? iPhone, iPad. Don't violate Samsung patents. Yeah, so thanks to Boy Genius Report yet again, Zach Epstein, um, for another win for Apple. Yeah, 
they say ITC iPhone and iPad don't violate Samsung patents. So Apple on Friday scored yet another victory over a rival Samsung uh, in the ongoing patent war being fought by the two consumer electronic giants in numerous countries around the world. In this latest development, uh, the International Trade Commission, or as we call them, ITC, uh, cleared Apple's iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch devices of infringing four Samsung-owned patents, as Samsung had charged last year. The full ITC commission will decide in January whether or not to uphold this preliminary judgment uh, Reuters is reporting. So uh, score another feather if, you know, if, if Apple wasn't you know, hitting enough slam dunks in this game. Uh, here is another one to just sort of rub it in the nose, so to speak. Right? Yeah. So, Greg, man, how about this? Uh, yeah. Sun develops Visual Base Connect powered email system for stroke-stricken mother. This sounds amazing. Oh, this is great. This is, this is social Greg's... Uh, heart tugging uh, story of the week. So thanks so much to Grant uh, Brissy of uh, GeekWire for this one. It, it just it was just amazing. So this is a heart touching story of a son who created a connect powered email system for his stroke uh, stricken mother. So um, a quote from the developer says, uh, my mom has lived with uh, aphasia ever since she suffered a serious stroke 12 years ago, believe it or not. And in the meantime, there's been just a, a revolution in communication. Uh, powered by social media. Uh, like a lot of people, uh, I use the phone less, and one of my areas of interest has been bridging the digital keyboard gap for people like my mom. I, I mean, <laughs> this is great. Wow. So, uh, to, uh, they talk about the technology. The system uses a connect sensor with the uh, simple open NI library for processing along with some gestures, uh, gesture recognition code to generate you know, a dashboard yeah. which the user could you know, select a mode and then qualify to create a sentence such as, I'm mm -hmm. feeling somewhat happy today, I'm feeling groovy. Oh, cool. uh, then it sends, <laughs> it sends them along in the email. And then future plans uh, include like maybe a user tested interface improvements, stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's still, it's still, you know, trying to be tested out, but it's just great that people are actually creating things to to help people and it, it just restores your faith in humanity doesn't it <laughs> yeah that's really neat when you hear these kind of stories where people are leveraging technology uh to to make uh you know someone else's life a little better especially someone in, in this type of need uh, it's even cooler when it's a diy kind of thing like this you know so what's this next story? Google just dropped an Android-shaped pop on China, <laughs> and it's and China doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah. Well, it could be Google so, doesn't exist anymore there in, in yeah, a minute here, yeah, I thought, depending on so. what I'm reading here. Uh, yeah, so thanks to the Next Web for this great story. This is really an interesting story. I think this is probably the most interesting story of the week for for me that mm -hmm. I've discovered personally. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. Google spoke out in response to allegations that it pressured uh, Acer into canceling the planned launch of a smartphone with Alibaba this week. Uh, this was a big story um, this week. Claiming that the e-commerce giant's Linux-based Alien system powering the cloud mobile A800, quote, weakens the Android ecosystem, says Google. Uh, the comment combined with Acer's admission that Google had, uh, quote, expressed concerns, unquote, over the, uh, over the device gives uh, validation to Alibaba's claims on Thursday, which uh, Google had initially declined uh, to respond to. There are a few interesting points to be taken uh, from the Google statement, primarily that Google is adopting its strongest stance yet addressing the limits of Android's quote, openness. Remember that? Uh, fragmentation oh. is a significant issue for the platform, and it seems Google will do whatever it can to control the issue. Uh, control is a key word here, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, the phone's unveiling was canceled hours before it was due to kick off, oh, with a number of journalists oh, already en route. Uh, but... <laughs> More than just upsetting media, the events and Google's statement cast a huge question mark over the future of Android-based OSs in the country. Uh, that this matters, uh, this matter concerns a Chinese firm uh, and a very powerful one at that. Alibaba's tip to outgross eBay and Amazon this year uh, is hugely significant, hugely, since the Chinese government sought a number of reinsurances around the future openness of Android when it agreed to ratify Google's $12.5 billion Motorola mobility acquisition in May. Remember that? Yes, Alibaba yes, says yes, it yes. has invested three years and 1,600 engineers uh, to develop Alien. 
And it is therefore well, likely that Chinese authorities will do what they can to help the company protect its investment. Uh, although exactly what that might mean is unclear at this stage. Uh, in addition to escalating the likelihood of a feud with Alibaba, which uh, last weekend denounced Android as unable to provide a, quote, a good user experience, end quote, in China. Not good. Apple's, uh, I mean, sorry, Google's approach will uh, concern a number of these Chinese companies that have developed, quote, forked Android uh, platforms of their own. Uh, Google's comment will also resonate outside of China, but is not likely to affect Amazon, uh, the highest profile modifier of Android. Uh, the, gi- the retail giant is not an OHA member, and through Kindle, manufacturer Foxconn is Amazon's huge global profile and existing tablet footprint makes any intervention unlikely or perhaps just too late. Uh, things are mm. further complicated complicated by the fact that China's three telecom operators are members of uh, OHA, which, I'm sorry, stands for the Open Handware Alliance. Uh, oh, okay. That could make things interesting for future handset releases and support. Uh, Android itself mm. is the top smartphone operating system in China, accounting for 68% of smartphone sales, but Google wow. faces competition from local vendors that are looking to push their own mobile products, many of which are based on Google's platform. <clears throat> yes. From yes. a Google perspective, though, uh, this stance is likely to win, uh, win it no friends in China, where it isn't exactly the flavor of the month anyways. <laughs> the company has little to lose in China since it generates no revenue from its Google Play there, Play App Store there, while it relocates its serv- uh, search services to Hong Kong two, two years ago. The company is uh, perhaps within its rights to draw a line on its Android system, but having professed Android to be a truly open platform, remember that, there's, little, there's more than a little That's irony good. in this approach uh, to the Acer Allian device. Wow. So this is this is a wow. massive, massive, massive story that's been underreported thanks to the cloud of Apple and, and everyone else. Um, but this is a, this could have huge consequences. As we both know, uh, China is a colossal market. We're, you know, if it's an o- it's truly an open source project, then you're supposed to be able to fork it and sort of do what you want with it to an extent. Um, oh. I, you know, this is this is you know, uh, this is strange. I think this what this does is really open the door for for someone like Samsung who who's been working on the the Tizen operating system, mobile operating system, oh, the, the old Mego product, and yeah. and uh, yeah. which is, I hear Tizen is is really nice, and and we'll see if they roll it out, and and other ones too. Uh, we've heard mm. uh, HP uh, Meg Whitman say we need to make our own phone too, and we all know that they own uh, WebOS, right? So uh, we could yeah. see the yeah. and that's open source. Uh, if they decide yeah. to support uh, WebOS again, um, or or when you know, we'll see. Yeah, you know, I'm. I don't know. This opens I mean, the doors Windows for others phone and stuff. So, so Greg, wow. IDF okay. 2012. Yes. What what is this all about? Well, More acronyms. Thanks Yay. to John. Mo- <laughs> yeah, like that. TLA is uh, coming from Social yeah. Greg. So thanks to John Morse at ZDNet for this summary. Um, so this week was IDF. No, not the Israel Defense Forces came to San Francisco, but the Intel Developers Forum. Um, so, you know, last week, uh, I think Intel came out with the announcement that the PC market was sluggish, right? And so yeah. this week, it had to kind of say something about some of their future technology. So um, at this uh, this week's event, the, the, uh, um, around the time, you know, Windows 8 announces, Intel says it will have more than 70 Ultrabook designs. So this, this announcement came that they're going to kind of shift to some focus on Ultrabooks, which is really what they've created, right? That market, um, and they're also uh, introducing a new chip called the Haswell, um, which uh, which is really targeted towards ultrabooks. And the third announcement that they had this week really centered around um, kind of like uh, you know talk technology, you know, uh, you know like Siri like technology. So. Um, it, you know, each one of the, each one of these things. You know, each one the chip, the chip, the ultrabook support. Um, the other thing that came out of this, I think, uh, also uh, that the um, writer wrote about was uh, battery life, which is a concern every time, right? I mean, they want we all want our devices to go lower, lower, and lower power, so we don't have to charge it as long or keep it plugged in at our desk, right? Um, so the they're they're trying to help Windows is the 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 crux of this, right? Ultrabooks, PC, Windows, you know, and they're trying to couple this with the uh, announcement coming up, what, next month, mm-hmm. I guess in October mm-hmm. of Windows 8, mm-hmm. right? 
So all this is just leading up to that, which then gives them some um, Ultrabook, you know, launches that will come in, uh, you know, December for for um, for the holidays. You know, HP, I think, even is going to be announcing one as well, uh, at least what that's what Meg Whitman said. So uh, they're doing their best. But if you saw a lot of the D, uh, there was like an infographic that came out this week that I tweeted out that, you know, if you look at Wintel, you know, because Win- Windows and Intel are tightly, you know, tied at the hip. You know their 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 adoption share is going down every year now. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. going down every year, right, right. and so th- this is their gasp to try to mm-hmm. maintain or even not lose any more. Or I, I don't know if they could really gain it back. Quite frankly, yeah. I, I don't know. What, what's your take on all of this? Um, yeah, I think as you state, and as the numbers show, uh, desktop sales are are falling off a cliff. You know, and ah. and tablets and I, other type of devices are eating up that market so it's it's right. very we, not we, we, not exciting news really in announcements anymore and and like i think to the extent you know me and you we had this conversation at mighty about even the iphone 5 and how what a kind of sort of media letdown it kind of was um yeah i think yeah. i think it's yeah. it's it's hit that threshold also where uh, it's not a new device you know the smartphone has been announced right. and it's done the tablet has been announced and it's kind of done until yeah. you know we get the next device whether whatever that may be it's well i don't know in, in the smartphone space it's definitely it feels like we're at the com- the commodity point like where it's just another toaster and we don't need a media event for another toaster where it's more interesting is sort of on the software side the app side kind of stuff maybe yeah but by yeah. N- now yeah. a, a nicer camera a nicer feature who ca- who cares about that anymore and on a desktop does anyone even care about that kind of stuff or a new oh, version of the gosh. operating system oh, windows i, 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 I think, mean who, who cares I, I think quite frankly only the server guys care about that right i mean the ones that power are yeah our apps, right right, right. <laughs> to support that stuff right Right. absolutely yeah right sure you know uh, i don't yeah yeah Um, so so it's hard for a company like intel who's not on the uh you know on the forefront of new device uh you know uh landscape right now so uh good luck to them uh i you know we still need trucks (laughs) yeah Yeah. maybe bmw will put some of their chips in there (laughs) help them with that uh uh, lightning interface or something yeah man oh my god this makes me want to go to the speed round a speed round. You got the first one up. Yeah, right? man. Right now. What's the first yeah, one? Yeah, so there? Google Apps says goodbye to Internet Explorer 8 and pull support uh, for the oh. browser. Thanks to Drew Allen off of TechCrunch at this one. The Google Apps team announced that it will no longer support, support IE8. Yay! And lower. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> this will affect everyone using Google Apps, businesses, educational, and government uh, institutions. The drop of support officially starts November 15th, a few weeks after IE10 launches. This means no support for Gmail, no calendar, no drive, no anything for for IE8, good riddance. Uh, yeah, and uh, hats off to that. As a web dev, I don't like anything earlier than IE10, I'll say right now, which has not been released yet. Yes. So uh, that gives you a little clue on yes. how not fun it is to uh, develop uh, web applications for Internet Explorer. <laughs> Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, how far back did normal people do? Two generations, maybe. Oh man, uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm seeing days? massive adoption of IE7 right now, still, you know, right? And th- thank goodness IE6 Whoa. is tapering off, but uh, I think it's going to be a long time before we get rid of even IE7. So anything to uh, accelerate that drop off, uh, you know, hats, hats <sighs> off to them. I, I, I commend anyone for going for it. So, Greg, speed round. What's, what are you? Thanks. Uh, judge approves ebook price fixing settlement. This is a continuation from stories that we've had in the past uh, the Tech Week updates. Uh, so, a judge has finally approved this antitrust agreement between a dozen states in which uh, consumers will receive more than $69 million, $69 million big ones from book publishers to settle the allegations of this price fixing of ebooks. So, uh, what that means to consumers is probably just lower ebooks. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know I, I don't think you or I are going to see any of that. Success. Nine million as a check coming into no, my house. I so, so <laughs> I hope so. So anyway, that was just this is a follow up. That was a, from a spring thing that we had mentioned earlier. So I just thought I'd want to give everyone an update in case they're really hanging yeah, on the edge of their seats. Wanting to know that. All right. Awesome. Man. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's your speed uh, round? An next iPhone one? case for the uh, <laughs> sharks and the jets. So thanks to Core seventy seven for this story. What's the Ooh. one thing your smartphone is missing? That's right, a knife. 
The what? Adapt XT iPhone case currently up for funding on Indiegogo features a little flip-out Tonto-style blade to solve that problem. Uh, at 1.5 inches, you won't be using it to fend off ninjas, but if you can get your uh, to your opponent before he breaks that bottle, you at least should be able to slow him down. And best of all, when the melee is done, you can grab your knife, that's it, your phone, and do the decent thing by calling an ambulance for your foe. Uh, so in all seriousness, <laughs> the writer points out that oh the case God. is actually designed to be a multi-tool and contains a screwdriver, a series of hex, head cutouts, and a bottle opener. So a handy little uh, multi-device for, uh, for your iPhone there. Speed round. A Swiss <laughs> army phone. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, speed round. Okay, last one here. Uh, Amazon Relents agrees to ditch Kindle Fire as for an extra fee. Uh, did, did anyone miss that? <laughs> I mean, come on. So... Amazon is giving you the way out now. They're not, not saying that you have to look at the ads, but you actually could opt out of them, uh, opt out of the special offers on its new line of tablets. So, whoo uh, you know, we knew it was going to yeah. go that It'll way. It'll only cost you $15 more. Yeah, so bake that into your sale <laughs> price, $2.99. Oh, yes. no, now it's $315. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so... Anyway, anyway, the HD is going to be uh, sh should have been shipping already with the 8.9 version going coming in November, so you could go ad free now. Nice, thank, thank you. you for letting us pay for that, Amazon. <laughs> okay, what's tip the tip time, of the tip week? Time. Tip time, tip time. All right, so my two, okay. uh, my tip. Am I up first or are you up first, Craig? Yeah, All right, are, so uh, Tube to TV sends YouTube videos from Chrome to XBMC. It's a Chrome extension, thanks to Lifehackers Ooh. Alan Henry. Uh, I'm a huge XBMC fan, so this is a, <laughs> this is an practitioner. So so here's the story. Uh, Chrome, watching a YouTube video on your computer that you'd rather watch on the big screen using your XBMC-based HTPC home theater. PC. Tube to TV is a Chrome extension that adds a button to every YouTube video you watch that lets you send a video right to your XBMC system with a single click. So after installing Tube to TV, you'll have to enter the IP address uh, or computer's host name for your XBMC system on your home network. If your XBMC setup is uh, password protected, enter that as well and click save. The extension even supports multiple XBMC installs, which is very cool. If you have one in your living room mm. and another one in your bedroom, for example, uh, for from there, if you're watching a video on your YouTube, like a movie trailer or a long podcast that really deserves to be in glorious HD on your HD TV, just, like just the click cars. the big send to XBMC button to make it happen. So a very handy little extension for all you uh, Chrome Chrome users out there. And uh, woohoo, good 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 on XBMC. I'm a huge fan and proponent. Okay, well, we got uh, ears on. The Apple new ear pods yeah. are worth listening to. Yeah. So thanks to Nathan Alvarez Giles from Wired for this. Uh, so the ear pods uh, offer a level of richness now that that you, I, I usually associate with mid range mm -hmm. and high high range ear earphones, such as you know the hundred dollar ish like Beats, mm -hmm. uh, Shures. You know, some of those things. Um, so their goal from Apple was to uh, have the earpods to deliver an experience of a person sitting in a room listening to high-quality speakers. Um, they're not quite that good, but they're close. You know, so um, they spent th three years developing this, so they knew how awful their other earpods mm -hmm. were. And they, had, they, they spent time on like 124 prototypes and 600 people. So, you know, check those new ones that come with your iPhone, yeah. I, the new iPods. They're really worth it. Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll be throwing right. them away in the trash can anytime soon, and you won't have to get, you know, you know, uh, uh, Sennheisers or Great something tip. like that. Great so tip. what do we have for events this week? Yeah, so October 22nd, we have FailCon. Uh, Cass Phillips puts on this nice. amazing event for entrepreneurs, investors, developers, and designers to study their own and others' failures and prepare for success. An awesome event. Uh, please go register at thefailcon.com. It's happening October 22nd, as I said, in San Francisco at the lovely Julia Morgan Ballroom in downtown San Francisco. Greg, what else is happening? Well, we have, the again, the Transbay Fest opening night is coming up uh, October 12th. Uh, join them at the Supper Club San Francisco for the Transbay opening night. Uh, it's an opening night for a, a two-day event uh, that will... Uh, uh, you know, be uh, interactive. Uh, it'll have uh, film uh, panels and workshops at the UC Berkeley Extension, uh, Art and Design Center, Transmedia Film Festival at the Landmark Theaters, uh, Embarcadero Center here in the city, and uh, interactive lounge 
at the intersection of the arts um, at uh, Yerba Buena. So, you know, this will be the open night one. They'll have a, uh, you know, be popcorn movies and uh, great talk. Awesome. So uh, join us for that. You can get your tickets uh, on our link on the website as well as uh, on the uh, on the on the podcast uh, link. So, yeah, catch it. It's worth it. it. It's the South by Southwest of the West. Very so cool. anyway. All right, people. So, how do they, how can they uh, help us uh, contribute yes, to the show? Yes, you can do so okay. by using the hashtag NRDSDK on Twitty, Twitter, Nerdstick. And uh, you can also uh, go to iTunes, do that, and subscribe to our audio and video podcast. It's the easy way to go. Give us an awesome rating of five stars, and that would be very helpful for us and help us up in the search rankings there and on the whole thing. And the go likes. to YouTube if you want and do a search on Nerdstalker TV, all one word, Nerdstalker TV, and we show up there as well. And we're on all the other uh, podcasting uh, places and wonderful zingy woo-doo dads and stuff to check us out. Well, don't forget our 24 by 7 uh, iBroadcast TV right. channel, uh, where all our all our podcasts are uh, are run 24 Infinitum. hours by seven. You know, we've been doing this over a year now, so it's been kind of cool. So uh, we have a lot of podcasts, and we put music in between. So it's kind of a kind of a MT, tech MTV ish type thing uh, going on, and you could uh, interact with us on there as well. So anyway. How can they you get, can a, get hold a hold of, of me? Uh, why don't you give me an email at Adolfo at nerdstalker.com or ping me on Twitter at, at nerdstalker. How about you, Greg? You can reach me at socialgreg at nerdstalker.com or you can reach me on Twitter at socialgreg. Um, love to hear from you guys. Yeah, oh, so, and we're uh, going to be anyway, uh, doing some yeah. uh, book reviews and stuff, right? We've got some stuff coming up. We're going to oh, be doing a lot of reading. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of reading on you know, Guy Kawasaki's new book, book that's being released on the awesome. 24th, and I'm trying to arrange an interview. So let's let's yeah, see how that goes. Yeah, and I'm reviewing uh, David Gray's new book, who uh, wrote uh, Game Storming, also. So oh. thanks to O'Reilly for that one too. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, well, good luck hey, this weekend. Too, man. Have a great week. All right, week. everyone. Be careful out there. All right. Thank you, uh, Jug of uh, Judge. Oh, Jug! Uh, you're thinking of Jugs, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah.